Good morning and happy Madaraka Day to every single person who's tuned into Citizen TV. We appreciate you and we wish you the best today. 60 years ago, Kenya gained self internal rule. Do we have much to celebrate? This is our special coverage of the Madaraka Day that's happening in Embu, that's at the Moy Stadium in Embu, and I want to show you live pictures from there. The preparations are ongoing anytime from now. We'll cross over to that place and see what's going on. It's been 60 years, and to just quote the former president, that is President Uru Kenyatta's speech during the last Madaraka Day, and he said that each time we celebrate our liberation struggle, Tradition demands that we ponder a series of questions. Fundamentally, we must ask this. How have we built on what was handed down to us? What account can we give of ourselves as the successors of the cause of our liberators? And can we honestly say that we have been faithful stewards worthy of their sacrifice. That is a conversation we'll be having later on this morning with my guest in studio already here. Eric Deuri, LSK president, is with us. Dr. Kenneth Mbongi, senior lecturer at the University of Nairobi Department of History, is with us here. We'll be finding out, do we have much to celebrate 60 years down the line? You can see the preparations happening live at the Embu, in Embu there, in Moy Stadium. More than 6,000 guests are expected to stream in. Most of them have already came in early in the morning to celebrate Kenya's independent self-rule actually 60 years down the line and the turning point on the front page of the daily nation this is what they're talking about turning point on a day like this in 1963 kenya took the first steps towards independence full of optimism for a bright future for its people but on the country's 60th birthday of internal self-government despite global achievements by many of its patriots the nation's congenital challenges remain intact thanks to corruption nepotism and tribalism if the fifth president is, presidency does not become the turning point, it will be difficult to imagine what could save the country's original dream. That is on the front page of the Daily Nation, and that is the conversation we're having in this morning with my guests in studio. Do we have much to celebrate? This is President William Ruto's first Madaraka Day happening in Embu. Let me introduce my guest real quick. Eric Deuri is the LSK president. Asante Sana for making time. Dr. Kenneth Obongi, senior lecturer at University of Nairobi, is also here with us, Department of History. Thank you so much for making time. Franklin Mukwanja, executive director for CMD, will be joining us as soon as he comes in. We'll drop him into the conversation. But Deuri, I'll start with you. 60 years down the line, do we have much to celebrate? Yeah, I think we do. Uh, probably the question is uh, you may not have a scale to tell um, exactly uh, how far or how much we ought to celebrate. But the fact that uh, we have largely uh, remained uh, a statehood, uh, the fact that uh, we've managed uh, to avoid, uh, to a large extent, internal, uh, serious internal wrangles that uh, surround our neighbors across, that is something that uh, uh, we should be uh, proud about. But then again, when you look at the vision, if any, of uh, uh, those who fought for our independence, you can see that there are a lot of hits and misses. And uh, of course, we celebrate the hits, the hits, but we also have to talk about the misses because uh, that is where our joint aspirations as a citizen Ah, and, and, and to that extent, I think that uh, we are still so far from uh, addressing uh, some of the challenges that were picked up at, uh, at independence with regards to uh, having a system of uh, education uh, that uh, is affordable and um, available to, to, to all, uh, medical, uh, poverty, we still have. Uh, having extreme uh, poverty in, in this country, uh, then uh, the, 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 big, the biggest hit of all that and the biggest challenge that we face as a country is one of nationhood. We still are, uh, um, uh, you know, in our cocoons, um, tribal cocoons. So in terms of getting a vision uh, and getting together as, as, a, as a nation, uh, we still have doing we're still doing very badly it's 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 not so easy uh, to say that this is what identifies us collectively as kenya so we don't have a shared vision in your view yes yes that that is still a, a, a mirage okay yeah dr Bongi, do you agree um 
Largely, uh, uh, Trevor, um, we have uh, much to celebrate. Uh, ours uh, has been really a mixed uh, bag of, of yes and, 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 and no. Uh, a mixed bag of uh, hope and despair, optimism and pessimism. Uh, we, we have been at times uh, too close to making it and yet uh, too, too, too far. So uh, I agree with uh, what the Uri is saying and uh, has tend to heard that um, uh, manifestations of um, some successes are uh, uh, actually there to, uh, uh, to see. Um, socially, uh, we gained independence at a time when um, uh, uh, we had nothing much to talk home about in the education sector, for example. Uh, today, you know, Trevor, you and me can sit here as uh, products of Kenya's post-colony, uh, I guess fairly educated and ready to contribute uh, to our nation's development. Th this was not obvious in the 30s, in the 40s, in the 50s. Uh, you go to healthcare, uh, you know, we, we, we have tried our best in a number of ways. Yeah. Uh, you go to effort to uh, eradicate uh, what Mzee Kenyatta called poverty uh, in, in, a, in a speech uh, in the 1960s. Uh, yes, we have tried. A number of uh, session of papers, beginning with session of paper number 10, 1966, and many other development plans that we have had. Uh, but um, uh, uh, largely, uh, we have a lot to do. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, as a country 60 years old, it's a pity that our people die of diseases that they shouldn't die from. Uh, a country that um, is 60 years old, uh, there are Kenyans, as I speak, who are not quite sure whether they will have a meal today, uh, you know. Uh, there are Kenyans uh, uh, in some parts of this country uh, who hardly have clothes on their shoulders. Uh, talk about grinding poverty. Uh, our com complex situation has been compounded by, uh, you know, uh, political challenges. He has talked about ethnicity. Uh, I don't want to, uh, uh, you know, uh, delve into that, uh, but, but we know it. Uh, you know, our greatest challenge is unity of purpose. Uh, we, we are a state struggling to be a nation uh, in a number of ways. Issues that touch on equality and, and equity. Yeah. 60 years later, we are talking about a fairly ethnicized uh, uh, approach to employment to the public service in Kenya today. Mm -hmm. uh, today, Trevor, the, the first letter of your surname can either uh, make you or destroy you completely. Yeah. Uh, th those are some of the challenges that uh, we, we need to look at and ask ourselves, why haven't we gotten to where uh, we should be? Okay. Uh, yesterday I was sitting here uh, talking about um, largely uh, the lack of leadership. Yeah. Visionary leadership. It's not that we have not had leaders. It's not that they have not tried their best in trying to put a very complex uh, situation together. Uh, but there is um, uh, serious gaps yeah. uh, when it comes to, tran uh, to tr uh, uh, transformation of leadership in our country that has a vision to yeah. pull everybody along uh, beyond uh, what divides us, ethnicity, gender, generation, yeah. uh, uh, class. And we'll come to that in just a bit because it's a rather wide topic there. Why haven't we gotten to where we should be? Five administrations later, Kenyatta won, Moi, Kibaki, now Uhuru, and then Ruto, we still haven't gotten the right leadership. That's a question that we'll talk about in just a bit. But let's cross over first to the Moi Stadium in Embu, where Stephen Leto is standing by, is the one covering that entire Madaraka Day celebrations for us live from Embu there. Stephen, good morning. It's good to see you. It's strange to call you Stephen, but they will call you Leto. <laughs> What's the latest from where you are? 
Well, good morning, Trevor, and happy Madaraka Day to all our viewers in and outside the country. We are coming to you live from Embu Stadium, uh, where this year's 60th Madaraka Day celebrations will be taking place and, of course, will be officiated by President William Ruto. This is uh, the, the, his first Madaraka Day, basically outside the capital, Nairobi, and that we are expecting, of course, to see a lot today here in uh, Embu County already by 6 o'clock. This stadium was already full to capacity. And, uh, you know, as uh, you can uh, see now from the pictures uh, the behind me and those ones that we are bringing to you live is that the military is uh, doing its uh, very last uh, dress rehearsal inside uh, the uh, arena before now the preparations for the arrival of the head of state. Uh, this, of course, will also be accompanied by other troops that will be marching around the stadium just in preparations and to make sure that they are making their very very last touches uh, into the uh, uh, you, you know into their drills but of course, uh, these Madaraka Day celebrations comes amid a lot of, uh, you know, issues in the country. Uh, you know, the uh, the president was already here. <coughs> you can see, sorry, if you can see uh, the drills. Of course, uh, we have been able to interact with uh, some of the, the locals who have already, uh, you know, made their way to the stadium here. Is that? You know they are, they are coming with a lot of expectations with regard to the to the cost of living and how the president will be addressing that matter in terms of the cost of commodities, the cost of uh, you know the prices of unga, but basically the basic commodities and household goods. Those are some of the expectations of the locals who have made their way to uh, this uh, stadium in Embo. And of course, the controversial, now the contested finance bill of uh, 2023. Uh, a lot of Kenyans have made their submissions before the Parliamentary Committee uh, on Finance in the National Assembly. Uh, some voicing their, you know, opposition to that bill. And with the opposition also calling for the withdrawal of the bill, the finance bill 2023. And that is uh, some of, uh, those are some of the issues we expect the president to tackle head on. Remember, he was in this particular county one week ago, and what we, the, 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 the defense he mounted towards the housing levy, the 3% housing levy, was that this is the time to, you know, do the 3% by Kenyans. And so that is the situation. The military has already concluded their time in the arena and now ready for the arrival of President William Ruto for this event. Trevor, it will be a busy day indeed. We are, of course, expecting a lot of dignitaries. Uh, you know, we are yet to know who will be the guest of honor other than President uh, William Ruto. But of course, a lot of excitement for the people of Embu. This stadium was constructed in a record three months just in preparations for this particular event. And so, Trevor, uh, that is what is happening currently in the stadium. Of course, we'll be making our way around to see and just to hear what the locals here in Embu have to say with regard to these years or 60th Madurak celebrations and of course we'll be coming to you live on, uh, in our subsequent minutes and hours as we await the arrival of President William Ruto who will be the chief guest of this 60th day Madaraka celebrations. Alright, thanks Leto. We'll cross over to Leto again to speak to the people who have already arrived there and find out what the expectations are for the day. But let me bring back my guests into this. And they were talking about why haven't we gotten to where we, where we should be. And uh, Dr. Mbongi was just talking about lack of visionary leadership. Five administrations later, Kenyatta won, Moi, Kibaki, Uhuru, and now Ruto, this is his first Madaraka day. Is it possible that we haven't gotten proper visionary leadership, or is this a systems issue? That whoever comes in can't change anything much, really? Uh, well, it's, it's a difficult issue to diagnose. Uh, in terms of uh, being specific, but we can make some general uh, statements. One, uh, the challenge of uh, the yesteryears uh, in, uh, during Kenyatta's time and um, uh, probably President Moi or a certain uh, leadership of President Moi also has got to do so much with the geopolitical uh, uh, politics that were going on at that particular time. And so there was way, uh, the, the, the leaning either to the east and to the west, and that had a lot of influence in terms of uh, some of the issues that uh, we were tackling with. 
But if you look at uh, the regime of, of Kenyatta, if you look at where the country was uh, in terms of its economic uh, uh, potential, uh, social potential, you, uh, you, you begin to see that we started losing it uh, the moment uh, President Moy took over and the political machinations that came in to try and, and, and um, prevent him from, from, taking, from taking power. And, 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 and so the system of then patronage that had, uh, was started by the first administration uh, grew in leaps and bounds to the extent that the uh, predominant political consideration was uh, uh, staying in power and, 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 and keeping the people who, uh, uh, or, or the few political figureheads, tribal figureheads that could sustain you in power, happy. And, 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 and you can trace this, the slope, uh, the slippery slope that uh, we, we took until now uh, we got into single party dictatorship and, and eventually got into multi-party uh, democracy that then was intended to, to bear that vision. Remember that even after we got uh, uh, into multi-party de uh, democracy, it took us a number of years before we could realize a new constitution. And so in terms of the, the, the document that then bears the vision for the country, it is the constitution. 10 years down the line, what are we seeing? We are seeing a constitution that is largely made of letter. But the spirit of the Constitution is lacking. And why is it lacking? Because the predominant consideration still remains accessing power and staying in power. So if you look at even what the current administration is doing, some of the policies that they are coming up with, they are coming up with policies that will just enable them to stay in power and not to uh, serve the, 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 the local man or, or the Mwanainchi. And I think that is where we have the disconnect, the biggest disconnect in terms of uh, the motivation uh, by our political parties to, uh, to gain power. So that's one of the biggest uh, challenges. The other challenges is also a challenge of the citizen, because it is the citizen whose uh, um, who also, maybe to a certain extent, it's a leadership that is supposed to uh, take them there, but who also uh, have not understood uh, the concept of holding uh, to, uh, le the leadership to account on its words. If you look at the current formation uh, uh, in terms of the political parties, uh, let's even just say, uh, let's look at the current president, for example. When he was campaigning, you will find that there are things he said about taxes and bringing down the cost of living that four or five months down the line, after ascending power, he has completely taken a 360 turn on those issues that he was, he was saying. But there is no one, even on in his own political party, his own supporters are not holding him to account for the words that he uttered that uh, made Kenyans vote for him. And I think that is one of the, uh, one of the other big problems that we have, that uh, we, we have sort of accepted that status quo, and we look at it and we say that uh, for as long as our person is in power, maybe if I keep supporting them, my chance to eat will come, and I'll be a happy person without uh, just uh, having that consideration of can we have this national cake and, and it be split evenly for all of us? And the reason why I was talking about structures is because even if the people want to hold their leaders to account, the process is so tedious that nobody is even willing to go through it. Even just a simple recall of your member of parliament is almost impossible. You see, Trevor and, and Deuri, we, we cannot understand uh, our country and our situation outside the historical context that has led us to uh, where we are. Uh, first, uh, l l let's look at the chron uh, chronology uh, that um, uh, my colleague referred to. 
Um, in, in the 1960s, uh, we uh, gained independence, and I'm using the word independence in quotes, uh, because uh, fundamentally, it was just a mere transition of power uh, from one group of elites to another set uh, of elites whose difference was just the skin color, because the state structures uh, remained fundamentally uh, uh, the same. Uh, Kenyatta one comes in in a very complex uh, situation, uh, which is characterized by hostility from the living imperial uh, power, wanting to retain a hand uh, and control of how things happened in Kenya, because still the British had the interests here. On the other side, you are dealing with uh, a euphoric uh, uh, masses uh, who say, uh, free at last, expecting fruits of independence, literally. Uh, in fact, some people, uh, if I may uh, put it a little bit dramatic, could even expect that rivers of milk will be flowing through their doorstep every morning, and theirs was just to pick and make their tea. Now, balancing that complex situation uh, using a basically uh, a foreign-based agroeconomy uh, in uh, a situation of a Cold War uh, was not easy uh, for Mzee Kenyatta. So what he did, he continued uh, uh, what he inherited under the binary of survival and perpetuity. Th th that's really what the, the, the word is saying. His concern was, I don't want to rock the boat. I want to be in place. Yeah. I want to keep all the interests uh, happy. Uh, and there we are. It was a balancing act. It was uh, a very delicate, not just a balancing act, yeah. a very delicate balancing act. Situations uh, then, uh, Mze was actually, I, I should say, uh, you, you know, the jagrin of some people, not bold enough. Yeah. Uh, to cut links with the colonial uh, situation that he inherited, uh, because he didn't want to rock the, uh, the, the boat. Uh, Mze had a very interesting way of doing things, a great admirer of the Western way of life, uh, but uh, uh, counterbalanced it with an image of an African uh, statesman, uh, uh, a paramount chief with a fly whisk and all the insignia uh, that gave him traditional authority. He survived. Moe comes in and basically talks about Fuatanyayo, follow the footsteps of Mze Kenyatta. He, he did it in a very complex way, but uh, overall was actually this idea of survival and perpetuity. Let me survive and continue myself. Uh, uh, you know? So what Moe did is basically um, you know, to uh, go back to the, to the uh, ethnic criteria yeah. uh, that Kenyatta used to maintain himself in power uh, and give a facade of Fuata Nyayo, which was very interesting because his understanding of Fuata Nyayo is uh, if, um, Moi, uh, 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 if Kenyatta build Kenyatta International Airport, we will do more airport. If we had a school called Kenyatta Mwatati, we have many more high schools. If we had the Kenyatta University, we will have more university. If we had Kenyatta Hospital, we will have more uh, hospital. It is almost literally for that. Uh, literally. Uh, that was purely for purposes of survival, and it creates a clique of uh, uh, you know, people under the pana of uh, uh, Kanu. Those were the days of Kanu Baba uh, uh, Namama. He, he lives, uh, in comes uh, the laid back. Uh, uh, Kibaki, who was basically a reincarnate of Kenyatta I. Uh, because uh, 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 Kibaki tried uh, very hard to mimic uh, Muse Kenyatta's leadership. Uh, you know, sit back, set of your boys, tell them to do their thing, uh, but they have to carry their clothes if things go wrong. Uh, uh, you know, but then uh, put people around you who will maintain uh, the status quo so that we don't rock the, uh, the boat. 2007-2008 tilted that a little bit, uh, but he sprang back uh, by doing uh, the, the reconciliation accord and uh, things worked. Uh, and quickly uh, uh, comes uh, Kenyatta II. Kenyatta II uh, 
uh, was a combination of uh, uh, his father uh, in terms of leadership style and, 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 and Kibaki. And, and then a few things seems to be working. Uh, basically, what they call, I'm not an economist, but the Keynesian economics. Fix the bigger things, and the smaller ones will take care of themselves. Mm. Ruto comes in. And from the eight months that you see, there's basically uh, some kind of very fundamental resonance with the Moi state. So the, the problem we have had is that uh, of all these administrations that we have had, none of them has taken a bold step to change the context in which our political leadership uh, and, and polity uh, emerged. Yeah. Th that is now a disconnect with what a number of leaders elsewhere uh, uh, in the world, in Asia particularly, uh, did. And that's why, for me, I took, yes, structures, yes, context, but these contexts are social constructs. Yeah. So we need leaders that are bold enough. I, I know there is also the larger geopolitical international system that is damning this. And, and a few African leaders who have tried to do that, uh, particularly during the Cold War, and they, they never survived. Tom Sankara, I spoke about him the other day. Uh, you know, Mtala Mohammed, uh, you know, what befell them. Uh, you know, and not to mention uh, Muhammad Gaddafi, not a very popular name in the West, but to give it to him. The transformation that he brought to Libya at some point, uh, the, the Libyan state was the only one that made sense in terms of social development of its people, in, in, in education, in agriculture, in health, and many other uh, fields. Yeah. But how long did he live? But how much of this is to blame on the citizenry? Uh, but you, you see, uh, Trevor, um, uh, again, back to the historical context, the citizenry of the global south are basically products of our history, uh, enslaved people, uh, colonized people, uh, uh, you know, people who are, 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 our mentality uh, has always uh, uh, been that of fixed somewhere. And there is a pattern in which uh, 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 groups of these people behave uh, politically in terms of their political ethos uh, and their political ethics. We are always looking for a savior. Yeah. We are always looking for a messiah. I, I know clearly uh, what will make me a messiah in Kenya if I, I emerged as a political leader. I know the tone. Uh, to use. I know the words uh, to use. And, and uh, President Ruto, uh, a young uh, Kenyan, vibrant, uh, you know, uh, a product of post-colonial uh, uh, Kenya, uh, without many trappings of, uh, of colonialism like the previous ones, uh, basically knew the right words, knew the right sentences that Kenyans would understand. And I uh, see him. That is typically uh, people who have had a history of domination, alienation, and, and control. Always looking up to a leader, a messiah, a savior. Yeah. That is our nature. I, I can convert myself from a simple uh, dawn in, in the University of Nairobi into something larger than life uh, in, in a minute, because I understand what excites our people. Yeah. Uh, that is why uh, the historical motives of uh, uh, we are going to Canaan, we are crossing over the Jordan. We are doing this. Uh, I am the Moses of today. I am this. The concept of hustlers and this and that, you know, resonates very well uh, uh, with us. Because consistently, in our national psyche, we are still steeped in that historical context where we are politically enslaved and we are always looking for a liberator. Yeah. And with that, this Messiah that people keep looking for, is in that then what translates into tribalism at the same time? Because uh -oh. most people say that if this Messiah speaks your language, it's even better. That's it. That's uh, it. How do you reverse that? Uh, you, you see, it will take a, a, a leader who has vision beyond an ethnic community, in my view, to do that. Uh, let, let me give the example. Many people don't agree with me on this. Uh, the, the, the example of um, uh, Mahatul Muhammad of, of Malaysia. 
Malaysia he has a ratio problem, not the ethnic one that we have. You remember the ratio riots of uh, uh, 1969, part of 1970. Uh, very strong ratio tension. The Malay, the Chinese, and, and the Indians. How did Mahathir Mohamed solve that? Equity and equality in everything. If, if you are appointing 100 uh, police officers, each race knows how many uh, of ours are there. Uh, you, you know, uh, uh, Singapore, the same thing. There is no issue that an Indian in Singapore or a Malay in Singapore or a Chinese in Singapore will. If, if we are uh, uh, selecting our kids to join opportunities in universities, it, 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 it's known. Proportionate to the population. Yeah. Will, is that very difficult to do? Uh, look at uh, our cabinet, uh, look at uh, our principal secretaries. Yeah. Uh, in a country that has 45 ethnic communities. Uh, if you wanted 45 uh, uh, principal secretaries, uh, what's the harm of giving one to each or taking, okay, this population is big, give it in proportionate uh, to the population and their contribution to the national economy? Yeah. Uh, what's so difficult about that? Okay. Uh, is that? Is that something that needs some political magic? Uh, but because uh, our political leaders, just like us, uh, uh, you know, uh, see or view situations from the perspective of us and them. Mm -hmm. These imaginary enemies of other communities, of other races, of other classes. Uh, you know, that is where our problem lies. Yeah. But there is this imaginary enmity that Dr. Ombongi is talking about and the tribal balance, isn't it just a perception issue? Because the fact that you speak the same language as someone who's appointed doesn't necessarily have any impact on your life. But then it is something that people still hold dear to their hearts, that they want to see someone from their tribe appointed somewhere. It's, it's not a perception uh, question. It's actually a real issue, which the Kenyan people, when they promulgated the constitution, required of each government to take into consideration. So as you make an appointment as the head of state or as a governor or as in any other public sphere, you are required to take into consideration a regional balancing. And I think that is where all the leadership and the leadership across this country has failed. For example, if you go to your county and uh, you apply, and somebody else who's from a different country, county applies, the, the first consideration is the person who has applied from that county. So, so that the system of ethnic patronage that is at the top has now been taken to county governments, and we can no longer hold anyone to account on these issues. And I think to a certain extent that is why I would have disagreed with my colleague here and agree with him also to a certain extent in terms of the examples that he has given, which show that if you take into account the country's historical issues as you move forward, and that is, what, uh, th that is where we, when we are in court, we always argue for what you call a holistic interpretation of the Constitution that takes into account the historical perspectives of the country, the present, and the future in terms of where the country wants to go to. And, 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 and this is where um, the crux of the matter is. If we have leadership that will not be looking at the people who voted for them as shareholders in the government and say that once you get into power, it does not matter who voted for you and who did not vote for you. You are president for all. And so therefore, the national cake should be distributed to all. Secondly, what does the Constitution say even as you take into account the question of 
regional balancing. It says that they want merit-based appointments. Appointments that reflect the values of the Kenyan people. Appointments that inspire confidence in public office. Now, just look at the appointments, for example, that the present government has made. Are those appointments that inspire confidence in the management of public service when majority of them either have cases in court or have you know, allegations of corruption against them? That is, the, that is the issue. So we are not, we have a very clear document, a living document, a living constitution that defines how the Kenyan people wish to be governed. But it is mutilated on a day-to-day -day basis by those who have taken an oath to protect and promote the constitution. So how, do you, how, how then do they sustain themselves in office? By ensuring that the political populace that elected them to office has a false sense of uh, they are in government by, by giving, you know, doling out appointments here and there so that the community looks at it and says, oh, yes, we are in government, we are in government. And by extension, excluding those who did not vote for it by way of, you know, uh, in, in, in a sense, uh, punishing them for not voting for that. When you look at that and you look at what happened to the struggle for Mau Mau, that is exactly what used to happen that in, 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 a, in, an, in, a, in a in a village, the village that supported, for example, uh, Mau Mau fighters, they would be, you know, punished, they would be hit, they would be... Uh, but the ones who were supporting the home guards who were against the Mau Mau would be rewarded by being given positions as chiefs and whatever. So is that... It, that is precisely the historical context that the Constitution wanted to cure, but it's precisely the historical context that subsequent leadership in this country have held for purposes of maintaining themselves in power. Yeah. So what do we need? We just need a transformation in terms of being, paying true fidelity to the Constitution. Okay. If we do that, then all uh, majority of the problems that we face in this country will be resolved. Okay. Dr. Mbonge, see. You know, uh, Trevor. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Theuri is saying, uh, and is right, uh, we, we are a paradox of um, a, a changing country without change. <laughs> okay. Changing country without, without change. Without change. Very <laughs> paradoxical. Yeah. Uh, because on paper, if, if you come from some imaginary country, uh, probably call it mass, and, and drop in Kenya and read our to documents, read our policy papers, read our constitution. I, I'm a historian, so I've spent quite a bit of time uh, reading some of these records. You will think yeah. that uh, Kenya must be one of the most sophisticated developed countries in the world. Dr. Mbongi, hold, hold, your, hold your thoughts in just a bit. Let's cross over to Embu, where Weru Nyambura is standing by, speaking to the people. Let's find out from them what the expectations are on this Mandaraka Day.